We welcome you to the Lighthouse in Cherry Tree, Pennsylvania, with founders and pastors Ken and Wilda Brown. And now, let's go into the service already in progress. So I'm going to give you key words, uh, and as and this prophecy goes forth. This is for in this house, uh, but on the internet. If you can receive this, uh, I'm going to give you the same words uh, that I'm giving to this people. And uh, as I looked at the prophecies, several of them uh, said that we are in a time of change. So at the top of your paper there, change is now in the prophetic realm. But what is happening, that which is in the prophetic realm is going to come into the natural realm. So I'm going to give you, and what I did is made an acrostic on change. And so the first one is celebration. Would you, you would think that wouldn't be it. But celebration, holiness, anointings, new things, uh, groweth and girding up the loins, and the enemy is defeated and I didn't put S down, I ran out of time, but the last one is the most important, uh, and that is salvations are coming. People are going to give their hearts and lives back to Jesus Christ, uh, and uh, we're going to see great changes take place. Uh, so change is now in the prophetic realm, and uh, these are from these words that I have here, this day, this night, this season, a wonderful change is coming to the local church. Uh, now, this day is in one prophecy, this night was in another prophecy, and this season, and you see how the Holy Spirit ties things together. So we are in a day and an hour when the Holy Spirit is moving in power and anointing, and the Holy Spirit is going to touch us, and he is bringing change. And I thought of this song, What a Wonderful Change. And when I was able to talk with Dale last night, and he stood there weeping, I need to just give my testimony. Uh, and I thought, what a wonderful change in our lives. Uh, so uh, everyone uh, under the sound of my voice, I'm telling you uh, that there is a change coming. And it's not going to be a transitional change. It's not going to be a long-term change. It's not going to be that we have to wait uh, on, uh, until 2025 uh, to see a change in our government, to see a change uh, in our lives, to see a change uh, in the church of Jesus Christ. Uh, the change, uh, and I picked these words up out of the prophecies, uh, this day, somebody say this day. Say it again, this day. A change is coming to the house of God. Judgment begins first in the house of God. And so there is judgment. Uh, we have been talking about repentance. Uh, we need to continue to repent uh, of our past, of our things, uh, of getting caught up in the things of this world. Uh, and uh, so uh, another place, it said, this night uh, is for this church, uh, for this is the hour of the Holy Spirit. And another said, we are in a change in the natural, a change of seasons. And uh, as the season is changing in the natural, so there is a change in the Holy Spirit. So when you're looking at this, this day, this night, this season, a wonderful change is coming to the local church. For the local church is arising into a third step or a third dimension of the glory and fresh anointing of the presence of the Lord. Wednesday night, uh, we have Bible study, and uh, the youth go back there, and, uh, and uh, the children go down to the other building, but we have a Bible study here, somewhere around 50-some people, uh, and uh, when Brother Rick, who is a prophet, uh, uh, Rick Cope Ministries International, sitting right over here, uh, when he came in, he said, Pastor, he said, I don't know what happened, but he said, something happened to me this week. Uh, he said, I was listening to tapes and reading the Word of God, and the anointing came upon me as it had never come before so strong. And he said, I have a word. He said, I don't know. Uh, this is right before service. Uh, and he said, I have a word for the church. He said, is it possible? And I said, well, the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're, we're going to take care of some government things. We're going to write a letter to some of our uh, some of our um, district, uh, what, what was it? Senators, yes, uh, Pat Toomey and uh, the other senator. And uh, we're going to take 15 minutes. We're going to do, uh, we're, we're going to move into this nation. And, and we're going to let them know that they're doing wrong by doing some of the things that they're doing. And we're going to let them know right from the church. So we had a letter that Tom had brought in, and it was a fine letter. 
I read it over several times, uh, and uh, so we passed those out, and, and we made a decision. So we took 15 minutes for that, uh, and then uh, I said, now, whatever you have, I said, I see the anointing on you. Uh, I said, take 15 minutes, and he looked at me, and he said, what if I would go over? I said, take 15 minutes, uh, and then if the Holy Spirit is moving, uh, continue. And I said, continue up to a half hour, because I have a lesson on the blessings of God to come. So... Uh, Wednesday nights, we never know what's going to happen. And some of you don't come Wednesday nights. You have other things and get involved in other things. Uh, but you are missing uh, because Wednesday night, the people that are here are hungry and searching and move deeply into the Word of God. We don't teach a light Bible study on Wednesday night. But what happened is when Brother Rick, the anointing came on him, and we did the first thing, and I finished up, and I looked, uh, and he was already ready. Uh, he jumped out of his seat and he came up uh, and began to talk and, and began to bring to us about the anointing and, and uh, that we're going to move into three different dimensions. Uh, we all maybe are on dimension number one or step number one, but there are three steps. Uh, and uh, so step number one, uh, and uh, he brought that several times, several times, uh, and the anointing was so strong and he kept going. Uh, and uh, when the anointing is strong on a person like that, I'm going to tell you, it wet, wipes out the physical person. But he continued the 15 minutes, uh, and he kept saying that. And then he walked up here, and he sort of looked at me like, am I going overboard? Am I all right? Uh, Pastor, what are you going to do now? I did not respond because I knew the anointing was there. And when the anointing was there, and he uh, said to the people then, he said, we need to take that first step. And then we need to take a second step. And Ricky said, that's right. And then we need to take a third step. Uh, and uh, so I'm thinking, is that scripture? Well, the Apostle Paul, uh, he was in the natural. Uh, he wrestled against flesh and blood in the principalities in the second atmosphere. Uh, but then there was a place where he was caught up into the third heavens. Uh, so we can be caught up into a third dimension in Jesus Christ. Uh, and so this is a prophetic anointing uh, that is coming to the congregation. Uh, and... Uh, he looked at me like, uh, should I give it up now? Uh, and all of a sudden, Ed and uh, Jen and uh, several other people started coming up. Uh, and uh, the people got out of their seats. Nobody, he didn't tell anybody to come up, uh, but they started coming up. Uh, and he said, we're moving in another dimension. Uh, we are now moving in another dimension. We all may be at the same level. Uh, but then he stepped up here and he said, I have just moved to a second level. Well, guess what? All those people that had gathered at the altar, he didn't tell them to get up to the second level. They knew that it was the Holy Spirit, and the people began to come up to the second level, and he said, I'm going to a third level, and he came up here, and pretty soon, I was over on the sideline, and I came down around, and pretty soon, there was nobody in the congregation. The whole congregation was up here at the front, and what Man, I wish I had a picture of that, but I didn't have it. I got a, the image in my mind. But the whole congregation said, we have decided we're going to follow Jesus Christ. And so with that, with those kind of things that are happening, it's a time, a wonderful change, and it's a wonderful change. Sometimes changes throw us all crazy. We don't know what to do next. Well, sometimes in the service we don't know what to do next, but... The next thing that uh, I have down here, a change is coming and is even now in the spiritual realm. Is there a possibility that we could call this change out of the spiritual realm and call it into where we live? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth where I live. Is it possible that we could say uh, a change is coming and even now is in the spiritual realm, uh, there is going to be a celebration. This is a prophecy, folks. Uh, this is a day of celebration of the remnant of the redeemed of the Lord. And they will come with singing and shouting and rejoicing. And the joy of the Lord will be upon their heads. Uh, and you say, Pastor, uh, that came through prophecy. And I said, yes. Uh, and uh, is there, remember, any prophecy that comes in this house must have a word of God behind it. 
And then I remember the little chorus we used to sing. It's right out of the scriptures. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. And everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall return. Da, 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 da. I forgot the rest. So it is a scripture. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall come. And everlasting joy, it's in this song, it's in the scripture. Everlasting joy. It's about time the church gets out of the molly grumps and gets out of their complaining and fighting over one another and fighting for positions. It's about the time that we know that Jesus Christ is the head of the church and we are the body and he was broken, his body was broken that there might be a healing in this house and we can start to celebrate already. I, I thought of the great celebration day we had for Jack and Kathy, their 50th anniversary and Jack was a little concerned. He said, Pastor, he said, what's the church people going to say if we take the whole service to have this type of celebration for our 50th anniversary uh, and I said Jack I said that congregation is going to be right with you and they were and it was a great celebration everybody say a celebration everybody say right now stand up and shout it out now is a day of celebration it's a day of joy everlasting joy shall be upon my head the joy of the Lord is my strength with joy I will draw from the wells salvation. Thessalonians, uh, uh, in everything give thanks uh, and praise him uh, and give the joy of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. And uh, again, I say rejoice for this is the will of God. Somebody say rejoice. Look at your neighbor. Say rejoice. Say, get out of your mully grumps. Get out of your complaining. Get out of your frown. It's not a time to frown in the joy of the Lord. It's a time of laughter. It's a time of celebration. Everybody shout, celebrate. And there's a song, and I don't know it is a contemporary song. It says, celebrate. Jesus celebrate, celebrate. That's a long time ago, and I don't remember it. Okay, but we can celebrate because we can celebrate for Dale here this morning because he has turned his life completely to Jesus, humbled himself before the congregation, gave a great testimony, and all the angels in heaven are shouting and clapping. We ought to be joyful. Rejoice, for the Lord has done great and mighty things. Everybody in here, the prophecy says celebrate. So we're going to bring it out of the spiritual realm, and we're going to start to celebrate. We're going to start to sing as we have never sung before. We're going to sing songs we have never sung. I do that every Sunday, but you, <laughs> you're going to sing songs. You may be seated. Today, and this is the actual prophecy right here. I'm reading it off of the prophetic word here. And uh, it says, uh, today is a day of celebration, and I, the Father, would look down with divine mercy and love, uh, and I will fill your hearts with singing today. What is that saying? It's saying uh, that there is a change in the atmosphere, uh, and we're going to bring it out of the spiritual realm and bring it right where we live. There ought to be some joy. Hallelujah. A couple Wednesday, uh, about three or four weeks ago, uh, uh, the youth and the kids both went back there, and uh, they, they were having a time together, and they were playing games and so forth. Uh, but here we're having a Bible study in here, and you could hear them banging basketballs, and, uh, and uh, they were shouting. And uh, I don't know, yeah, Jen and Matt are sitting back there, and Jen came up after and come in and apologized. She said, oh, Pastor. I tried to call them down, but I couldn't get them calm. I said, Jen, if it were possible, I'd rather have you people doing that and, and tell them try to calm. We need the joy of the Lord in this house. We don't need to come here and sit here and say, all right, uh, I made it one more Sunday. Uh, I hope uh, that pastor doesn't go over 1130 because at 1130 he's going to pull my coattail. But, so I'm on point number one, celebrate. Everybody say, uh, Celebrate. There's going to be trials, there's going to be tribulations, but love is flowing from heaven. And I sent my begotten, only begotten son, it's a day of praise. And then I wrote down some scriptures, Psalm 30, you can put it up there, Dorinda, if you will, Psalm 30 and verse 11, and he will turn my mourning into dancing. Do you ever, do any of you ever remember 
When the power of God used to come down in old-time Pentecost and even old-time Methodist, uh, and the people would begin to dance and sing before the Lord. Does anybody remember those days? Uh, and now if somebody gets their feet going a little bit, it's, oh, look how worldly they are. They're just dancing. Well, David danced before the Lord. Uh, Miriam took her timbrel uh, and danced uh, and gave a great prophetic uh, song uh, about the victory. Uh, and so... Uh, that scripture says, uh, you have turned my mourning uh, into dancing, uh, and you have put off my sackcloth uh, and girded me with gladness. Uh, this is bringing it out of the heavens right down where we live. Is that word of God? So that prophecy that came, today is a day of celebration and, and uh, divine mercy and love. Uh, another in Psalm 30, while you're there, Psalm 30 and verse 5, uh, and I didn't know this was in there. Uh, I quoted a lot of times. Uh, there are times of weeping. I mean weeping for heartache and weeping for troubles. Uh, for his anger is but for a moment. His favor, has somebody shout favor. I don't hear you, favor. His favor is a lifetime, and in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Somebody shout in this house this morning. I want you, I don't want you to sit there and just listen to me. I want you to get involved in the joy of the Lord. I want you to be enjoy, involved in a celebration. I want you to drink of the water of life freely. I want you to eat of the bread of life and know that God is telling us it's a day to celebrate to Jesus Christ. It's a day to celebrate. You say, but pastor, at the political realm. It's a day if you begin to celebrate, the political realm will be turned over. So it's a day of celebration. Joy. Everybody shout joy. joy. Say it out loud. Joy. Joy, joy comes. Uh, weeping uh, and uh, uh, trials and so forth. Yes, they're going to come, but you don't have to stay in them. Joy will oh, oh, supersede that. Uh, and uh, somebody said, well, Pastor, it's like this celebration you're talking about. And, and don't worry about it if I don't get done because I'm going to do it tonight. And I'll finish tonight. And if you stay home tonight, you get half a message. Yeah. But these are prophecies, okay? So anyway, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, I got, got to thinking about that, a time of celebration, a time of festivity. Uh, oh, Pastor, you're preaching a positive message here. And you know there's going to be sorrow. I know there's sorrow. I know there's trials. I know there's hurt. I know there's sickness. I know there's disease. But I also know that there's somebody in heaven that has won the battle for me. And at the cross, at the cross, I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart rolled away. And the stripes of Jesus Christ are for my healing. For surely he has, he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquities. A chastisement of my peace is upon him and by his stripes I am healed this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to celebrate healing in this house. I want to celebrate with Dale this morning. I want to celebrate with Jeff and giving his heart back to Jesus. I want to celebrate with this young lady. You are off of drugs how long? Five, six years now? Almost six years. I want to celebrate with her because not only is she off of drugs but now the anointing on her and took that place and now she's laying hands on others and they're being set free. Somebody ought to shout and celebrate with her this morning. Somebody ought to celebrate with me because I'm still walking and talking at 77. And uh, and somebody said to me last night, we, we have chairs for you, Pastor. Would you sit down? I don't sit down. I done got religion and I can't sit down. I done got Jesus in my life. I, I, I am in my walking and in my talking and, yes, even in my sitting and in, in my sleeping. When I have to get up at night, my shoulders, uh, uh, whatever, that, that pain uh, it begins to take a hold of me. Uh, I kick myself out of bed. I didn't say my wife kicks me out. I said I kick myself. I, that's how I get up. Uh, I throw my feet up in the air and I spring up out of the bed. And then I go walking through the house. And I go walking. I go out and get a glass of milk. Uh, I get a couple crackers. I, I, don't wanna, I, I don't want to get adipose. If you don't know what that is, it's winter fat. But anyway. <laughs> and I began to walk. And I, last night, 
I began to walk through the house, and I, I do this. I walk through the family room, walk through the living room, uh, walk back and forth. I don't disturb anybody. I just walk. Uh, and uh, last night, I opened the door to our new study, uh, and I went out, and all my papers were there. I didn't sit down, but I took paper, and I began to walk. I picked up the one with all the prophecies on it, uh, and I began to walk, and I said, Lord, somehow get this into this people this morning. If I can only get you to celebrate this morning, if I can only get you to get to the joy of the Lord, uh, I got other great things, uh, but uh, uh, the Lord has great things. Uh, oh, his favor is in life. Uh, weeping endures for the night. Uh, and I got to be thinking about that. Is that really scripture? Well, I went back, and I, I found this scripture back book of, uh, uh, let me see, uh, Zechariah. And it says in there, it says, uh, you have fasted in the third, the fifth, uh, the seventh, and the tenth month. But I am taking that fast because you fast only for yourself. He said, I am going to change. Everybody shout, change is coming. He's taking the fasting of the third month, the fifth month, the seventh month, and the tenth month, and I'm going to turn it into feasting. Fasting change the feasting. There is not going to be any more fasting right now. We are in a time of celebration. We're in a time of feasting. And he said, and with joy and gladness shall you come forth. So serve the Lord in the goodness of his mercy. Serve him with joy. Get your molly grump. Get that frown off your face. Get that horse's foot out of your mouth. Begin to open up and Oh, how I love Jesus this morning. Say, uh, the joy, uh, the joy, uh, with joy shall you draw from the wells of salvation. I want you to celebrate this morning. If you're going to sit here and listen to me, I'm quitting. I have 14 minutes, and then I'm done. You say, Pastor, you may only get one point in. That's all right. I'll get the rest some other time. I'm not worried about it. If I can get you to begin to have the joy of the Lord and be thankful for what God has already done. Thankful for the sun that's out there this morning. When I went out to get in the car to come over here and check the heat, and if it's pretty warm in here, it was a little bit cool here this morning. I put her up to 75. I said, I don't want no cold fish in this church. So if you're sweating a little bit, it's because I did it purposely in the natural. Now, I did turn it down a little bit, uh, but I, I don't want no cold fish uh, uh, swimming belly up uh, in this house. Uh, you're going you're gonna to move uh, into the things of the Lord. Somebody's going to get up right now, uh, and they're going to start to shout uh, and clap your hands, uh, refill your hands in the air, and praise the Lord, uh, and you're going to celebrate uh, the glory of God. You're going to celebrate Jesus Christ. You're going to celebrate uh, because uh, his divine favor and divine uh, presence uh, is in this house. Uh, Jesus, uh, be glorified in this house. Uh, shout unto the Lord uh, with a voice of victory. Uh, get noisy this morning. Get noisy. Hallelujah. If possible, you can be seated. Whew. Hallelujah. Glory. In Zechariah 8, 19, that's where it was. A change brings about a celebration of salvation. It's a day of joy, a day of rejoicing, singing, gladness, feasting. Uh, the redeemed of the Lord. I sung that little chorus, and I have it right here. And then in the Lord, in another prophecy, a separate one, it said, Oh, would you please succor, succor my promise. In other words, uh, take my promises as they are and receive your blessings. Celebration, that's the first of the change. C. Everybody say C. It's a celebration. The second one is H, and you'll see that going down through, and I'll just give them to you real quick. Celebrations, holiness, anointing, newness, groweth. I have expectations, but the enemy is defeated there, and I expect that. So uh, I gave them to you twice now, and I know you're not going to remember them, but you're going to remember to celebrate. You're going to remember to begin to sing. You say, well, I sing like an old frog. Well, in the springtime, Pastor Wilda waits for those old frogs. And she'll be driving down the road, and she said, do you hear that? And you say, what do you hear? Frogs are croaking. What does that mean? Well, the time they do the uh, glass, uh, that means that spring has arrived. So we begin to joy in an old frog. 
So if you sound like an old frog, yeah, that's okay. You just go ahead and croak. I mean, no, 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 no croak. I mean, give a sound. <laughs> Croak means die, doesn't it? Okay. <laughs> uh, the second thing we have down here, uh, and uh, it's right there, is holiness. Holiness. Holiness is what I long for. And the first thing that I saw uh, two weeks ago when uh, Brother Rick was preaching, he said there are two things that are coming to the house, righteousness and holiness. And so this is right off of your paper. I take notes on, I take notes on these guys, check them out, make sure they're doing the right thing. And uh, boy, do I get it a good time when I go home and read the notes. <laughs> Righteousness and holiness. And there's a song, and uh, I have it on, I used to sing it, it says, holiness, holiness is what I long for. Righteousness, righteousness is what I need. And the holiness of God, holiness is coming back to the house of God. We need that separation. We need to separate the things of the world. Uh, a, a lot of people don't show up here on Sunday morning uh, because they have something else. Uh, they're running to Walmart. They had to get a glass of milk. Uh, or they had, they had to get some bread. Uh, they forget that the bread of life is right here this morning. Uh, and uh, uh, tonight, and I, uh, some of you are come here on Sunday morning. Last Sunday night, we had a whole bunch more people than we do on Sunday mornings. This place uh, was was pretty well full, and people are going to be coming. And while I'm saying that, next Sunday night, uh, uh, Prophet Tim Colosino from Grantsville, Maryland, had called, and he's going to be here next Sunday night. Uh, and uh, that's why I want to do all the prophecies first, because he is a prophet, and he'll come in, and he'll prophesy. And then whatever he prophesies and whatever he gives... Uh, the following Wednesday night, I'm a teacher. I will teach what he prophesied. Because when those prophets get in there and they get in the spirit, sometimes they say things you say, what in the world was he talking about? Well, that's, that's what I do. I bring it and then I teach it. So he'll be here. But uh, anyway, uh, we're getting into this next part, holiness. Let me just read the prophecy. Holiness. Uh, holiness. Uh, what is it? Uh, even this morning, my people, even this morning, now this was given... I don't know what date, uh, but even this morning, this is right from the direct, came in a prophetic word from a tongues and interpretation. Even this morning, my people, there is a holy hush of the Holy Spirit within this house. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying holiness and righteousness is here. We're bringing it out of the spiritual realm and bringing it right where we are. So if you have your paper there, holiness and righteousness, be ready and expectant for a new understanding of righteousness and holiness will pervade the services, bringing forth revelations, healings, miracles, and newness within the people with a spirit of generosity. That's not my term. That was in a prophecy, and God said, my people, my church, I prophesy over you, and this church is going to become a church of generosity. Hallelujah. We are a church of compassion. We, we are a church that believes in Jesus Christ. We are a, a, a people of the word. I never heard that before. But this church, this people are going to become a people with a spirit of generosity, love, and compassion that will bring the family of God into a unity. There will come times, listen now, there will come times of a holy hush. Of the Holy Spirit within the house. Because God will be speaking to very hearts of very individuals. Uh, there will come a perfecting of the holiness uh, in the fear of God. And a manifestation of grace and truth as the divine presence sanctifies. Uh, uh, Pastor, uh, holiness coming to the house of God. Uh, over in 1 Peter 1 and 15 it says, Be ye holy as as I am holy. Uh, over in uh, first Corinthians, or Second Corinthians 7, 1 Corinthians 7.1, we are to be perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Uh, Ephesians 4.24, uh, there shall be a manifestation of grace and truth uh, as holiness comes in to the house of God. Uh, and the word holiness comes from hagio, uh, which is a Greek word meaning uh, the very divine presence of God is going to settle upon the congregation. And nobody, even the prophets, even the Gabby people, will not be able to say a word because holiness 
will encompass us. Have you ever experienced the holy hush of the Holy Spirit? Where you come to a place where you don't have words to say. You come to a place and you come into the holy of holies. And the very presence. Uh, and sometimes, uh, you know, we, we preachers, we, we have a mouth. And uh, we always want to say something. And uh, we, yeah, I, I was the quiet person who never spoke anything. And when God changed me, he changed me clear to the opposite end. Now I can't shut up. And I go to people and I, I say to my wife, because she and her dad were always people who could talk to other people. And I would go and sit in the corner. I don't sit in the corner anymore. I go right up. I don't care who it is. And, and I began to talk. But there are times that we need the holy hush of the Holy Spirit. Four minutes yet, sir. Are you ready? Okay. Somebody say holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning my song shall rise to thee. started that song off, I felt an unction and an anointing. Would you agree with me that holiness comes to this house right now in the name of Jesus? Everybody with me, holy day, are you ready? Holy, 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 Lord God. right in order anointings and I'll pick up on anointings tonight last Sunday night we had anointings and we anointed was it last Sunday night when I had the, all the everybody in the congregation brought the children in brought the youth in everybody was anointed and uh, I'm looking at the prophecies and the Lord is saying I'm going to bring a refreshing to you people you're celebrating you have the joy you're moving into a holiness and righteousness. You have moved into my divine favor. You have moved into a place where I can speak to you. You've moved into a place where we can come, and all the singers and musicians, please, where we come into a place where we can commune together and have communion. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, we invite you to watch a new service every Sunday evening at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Watching on Facebook, please click the like button and leave a positive comment. And please, share with others. YouTube watchers, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Help spread the good news of Jesus Christ.